Today, our journey begins in the National World War II Museum's Manhattan Project exhibit in the Arsenal Democracy Gallery to learn about the origins of atomic energy. Hi, I'm Julia Hutto and I'm a high school student right here in New Orleans, Louisiana. I've been a youth volunteer here at the museum for three years. Before we talk about the Manhattan Project, we have to cover some basics. Let's start with atoms. They are the smallest unit of matter, or physical substance. The solids, liquids, and gas around us are composed of atoms. The chair you're sitting in, the eyes you're using to watch this electronic field trip, and the screen you're watching it on are all made of atoms. And you probably know the different subatomic particles of atoms, protons, neutrons, and electrons. The positively charged protons and the neutral neutrons form the nucleus of the atom, and the negatively charged electrons exist outside of the nucleus. Here with me is Rob Wallace, head of STEM education here at the museum to review World War II era research on atoms and their significance. Thanks for joining me, Rob. I'm excited to be here with you and to show you around this great gallery. Now, Rob, as we know, there are many different elements on the periodic table. Two that are important to what we'll be talking about today are uranium and plutonium. Now, what makes two atoms different from one another? Well, what makes one atom itself and not any other element is the number of protons that it has in its nucleus. Let's look at this di these diagrams to show us. So if you'll choose uranium there, it'll show you how uranium is made. Uranium has 92 protons in its nucleus. Uh, in its nucleus are protons and neutrons. If it changes the number of protons, then it becomes another element. If it adds a proton, then it becomes neptunium. If it adds two, then it becomes plutonium. But you could change the number of neutrons and not change elements. Then you become a different isotope of the same element. Now, why are isotopes important? Well, isotopes are important because different isotopes have different stabilities. They last longer, they have different uh, properties of fission, which means breaking apart. And there, are, there is one isotope of uranium that they tend to use in nuclear weapons and one of plutonium that they also use among the among the many. Now what exactly is a nuclear reaction? Well a nuclear reaction is where the atoms split in half. In a regular chemical reaction you break one atom from another and in a nuclear reaction it's called fission and you can see it here on the diagram. You're going to get a an nucleus splitting in half and that way you get atomic energy. When a nucleus splits a tremendous amount of energy is released and new lighter elements are created. In addition to the release of energy several more neutrons come out of the reaction. The release of a large amount of energy in many many instances of fission could result in a massive explosion. So Julia all that science that we talked about over there all those discoveries occurred mostly in Germany. In 1938, a lab discovered fission of uranium, and Lisa Meitner coined that term, fission, when she looked at the data. What else was going on in Europe at that time, in around 1938? So while Germany does not invade Poland until 1939, Europe is on the brink of World War II. So that was a scary time and a scary place for so much power to be in somebody's hands. The refugees fled because they were living in the shadow of Hitler. Let's take a look at a cool artifact here. This is a letter from uh, two refugees, one of whom is somebody you might have heard of. Albert Einstein. Yep, Albert Einstein. You can see his signature here. And who did he write this letter to? President Roosevelt. That's right. So another scientist, Leo Szilard, met with Einstein and tried to convince him to write a letter to Roosevelt because Einstein was such a prominent figure that Roosevelt might pay attention. And they wanted to outline and point out to Roosevelt what they were concerned about, which is that with the science being developed in Germany, that Hitler would be the first to develop nuclear power into a weapon. And so they wrote this letter and it got to the desk of Roosevelt and they decided to um, act and develop the Manhattan Project. 
Einstein encouraged Roosevelt to speed up experimental work by providing funds and perhaps also by obtaining the cooperation of industrial laboratories which had the necessary equipment. This letter also warned Roosevelt that Germany had access to uranium ore from Czechoslovakia and that the U.S. government needed to support uranium research. Did Einstein actually work on the Manhattan Project? Uh, no, he didn't. That was towards the end of his career. Um, but he, at the end, after the bomb was used, he was actually really horrified by the effects of the bomb and was sorry that he had participated in it. Um, but more on that later. Rob, thanks so much for your time. Right here in the United States, scientific experimentation took us from the first sustained chain reaction, which couldn't even power a light bulb in late 1942, to the test and usage of destructive atomic weapons less than three years later. The pace of innovation is staggering.